Welcome back to Fallout 3 everybody, welcome back to the Wasteland where today we're going to be taking a look at the remaining weapons. These are the last six weapons, primarily consisting of the alien weapons from the Mothership Zeta DLC. So in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Alien Atomizer, which is the pistol, the unique version of the Pulverizer, the Mesmatron, its unique version of the Microwave Emitter, the Alien Disintegrator, and the Destabilizer. All of these are DLC weapons with the exception of the Mesmatron. So first up let's go over the Alien Atomizer, we'll go over the pistols first and then we'll go over the rifle at the end. And these are a pretty common weapon to be finding on the Mothership Zeta DLC. A lot of the aliens tend to carry around the alien atomizer. It is probably their most common weapon or one of the most common weapons in that DLC. And this one is pretty good. For stats, this one does 35 damage per hit, which is quite high for a handgun. This does 105 damage per second, also very high. This one does have travel time similar to like the plasma weapons, except for this one is less of a ball and more of just like a, a beam. So the beam isn't as fast as like the laser weapons nor is it as accurate as them it's more like plasma but it has a smaller hitbox overall so it can be a little bit awkward to be using this at longer ranges this one has a one times crit modifier with higher crit damage than it has regular damage at 40 which is good this one only costs 20 action points it is very good in the vats build this one does have zero spread but like i said it does have uh travel distance so you still have to lead your shot if an enemy is moving the atomizers only weigh two weight they are very lightweight and this has 714 shots before it breaks it is quite durable so the alien atomizer actually has a lot going for it for the general pros and cons of these weapons and this is going to be more towards the alien weapons they have good damage and good damage per second they actually work really well as general purpose weapons and they all take the alien power module which is more common than something like the alien power cell so you can carry around a whole lot more of them if you would like, which is pretty cool. This doesn't really go for the Mesmatron or the Microwave Emitter so much because they are a little bit more awkward in just the way that they work, as well as the Mesmatron doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. It can do some damage, but it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Major cons to almost all these weapons is that they are DLC related, with the one exception being the Mesmatron, but that one is also quest related, sort of, so you do kind of have to go out of your way to get these and that's about the only real problem with them other than that they actually have pretty good stats all the way around the alien atomizer is actually one of the most solid pistols in the game and i'd probably put this one up into a tier for a rating i think it's actually pretty good let's move on to the pulverizer which is slightly different and this one is probably one of the easiest to miss weapons in the mothership zeta dlc because you can easily walk past the hallway that has this there's a hallway with a locked door, you just go in there and then this is found on a shelf. Well, this doesn't look any different than the alien atomizers that you've been picking up to this point. But this one is substantially better. So for the stats of the pulverizer, this one does 37 damage per hit, slightly more than the regular one. 111 DPS, which is pretty good. This one has a 2 times crit modifier though, which is a lot better. Makes it so you're more likely to hit crit. Still does 40 crit damage, so still slightly above uh, what its regular damage is, which is nice. This one, its main selling point though is its action point cost. This one only costs 12 action points to be using in VATS. You can shoot this one a ton in VATS and it's really, really strong in a VATS build. And this one still has zero spread. It still has a magazine of 20, which is quite a lot for a pistol. Weighs two. This one does have slightly less item HP though at 676 shots before it breaks. So you will need to fix this one up more often. But for a VATS build, this one is pretty much like a top tier weapon. It is really, really good. So for an overall rating for this one, I'd put it all the way up in S tier. I think it's one of the best pistols in the game and definitely one of the best VATS weapons in the game. Let's move over to the Mesmatron and its unique variant. And the Mesmatron's kind of a weird one. So you get this one at Paradise Falls. You just have to talk to the slavers there and then they will give you this as well as slave collars. And you use this to tase somebody basically and then put a slave collar on them if you'd like. Or you can loot them. This does come with limited ammo. You actually only have the shots that come with Mesmatron and it is the only thing that uses the Mezzer cells. So you can't put them in anything else, which is fine. This weapon is mostly a quest item and mostly a utility item more so than a weapon because for the stats, the Mesmatron only does one damage per hit and one damage per second. This also has a travel time. It's the same animation as like the Robo Brain's brain attack where it has a very slow moving projectile that hits or the uh, Meyer Alert Kings can also do this. And when you hit an enemy with this, usually they'll get stunned. At least if they're a human enemy, they'll get stunned. And then you can talk to them. It doesn't matter what type of enemy they are. They could be raiders. They could be regular civilians. Usually this works to mez somebody and then you can take their stuff if you would like. So it's kind of a cool interaction that way. 
but it does kind of have limited uses because of its limited amount of ammo. This does have a one times crit modifier, although it can't hit any crit damage, so it doesn't really matter that it can hit crits. This one does cost a massive 65 action points to be using in VATS. You don't really need to be using this in VATS, but if you want to make sure that you hit, go for it. You're probably just going to be using this at very close range. This only holds five shots. Although one shot is enough to stun somebody, so you probably don't need a whole lot of shots with this. This does only weigh two weight, and since this isn't technically a quest item, you can always put it away whenever you'd like. But um, it, two weight isn't that big of a deal. This does have a ton of health at 2,500 shots before it breaks, which you're never going to get to in the regular game. That's just going to be super impractical, which is kind of nice because you can't really fix this one with anything else. So you're going to need traders to fix it up if you want to fix it up. I don't think there's a need for it. Or you could use the alien epoxy, which would also work. And of course, this one does have the unique effect of mezzing people. So you can mez them, loot them, and then let them go. For an overall weapon, the mezmatron is pretty bad. But as a tool, it's very fun and it's very unique. So I'm going to put this into D tier, but if you like using it, go for it, because it is pretty fun, especially for getting through at least the Paradise Falls quest. Um, that can actually be pretty useful, because some of the people that they want as slaves, at least like the guy who tries to snipe you at the other place, that's usually the one that I take just so that I can get in there quick and early on, which is nice. Let's move on to the unique version, the microwave emitter. This one can be found in Point Lookout. This one you get basically at the very end of the main campaign, because... It's located at the last location uh, in the underground vault when you're confronting the brain. You can go there and then it's just found on a workbench. This one does have stats and this one doesn't use the Mezzer cells. Although you can actually find a few Mesmatron cells there for the actual Mesmatron. This one uses microfusion cells though. So same as plasma rifle, laser rifle, all that fun stuff. The microwave emitter for stats actually does quite a bit. This does 60 damage per shot and 62 damage per second. The damage per second is honestly not that good because of the slow travel time and the slow charge time of this. There is also another problem with these weapons like the Mesmatron and the microwave emitter and then they take up a huge portion of your screen. So it's actually kind of difficult to see what you're shooting at. And since the beam travels slow, it's really difficult to hit at longer ranges. This one does have a two times crit modifier with 100 crit damage, so it actually hits crits really, really well. And this only costs 30 action points to be using in VATS, which is a lot better than the regular Mezzer. This one does have slight spread, which is weird, at 0.2, so it's not as accurate, where the other one is a whole lot more accurate. This one holds five rounds in it, just like the regular Mezzer, and has the same reload animation. This one does weigh a lot more at eight weight, which is pretty much the same as like the plasma rifles, surprisingly. And this one has 375 shots before it breaks, which you're going to need to fix this up with something like alien epoxy or getting a vendor to fix it up for you. So it does have limited life on it as well. This weapon I find exceptionally awkward. It is strong. If you just look at it based on the stats, it's actually quite good. But in terms of practical use, it's really awkward. I do not like this over a lot of the other energy pistols. This one is not really one of the best in my opinion. I'd put it up in a B tier because if you are just using it at close range, basically as a energy pistol shotgun, and you don't want to go with a Protectron's gaze, which would be better than this, it's okay. But even then, it's still not really the best use for that. As well as you do have to get to the end of a main story, well, the DLC's main story. So it's going to take a little while and you could rush better energy weapons if you really want to rush a weapon like this. However, if you just really like the look of it or really like the way that it functions, go for it. Now let's move over to the alien rifles, the disintegrator and the destabilizer. So the disintegrator is the more common one. This is the one that you're actually going to find the aliens using against you. And this one also uses the alien power module similar to the atomizer and the pulverizer. This basic rifle is actually really good. It's probably the best basic weapon in that DLC. So this one does 65 damage per shot which is quite high 130 damage per second that's also really good this has a two times crit modifier so it's very likely to hit crits with 50 crit damage less than its regular damage but still a high amount of crit damage this one costs 30 action points to be using in vats which makes it okay for a vats build this has one spread it's not the most accurate rifle but it's not too bad either if you're just going to be using this at close to medium range this has a magazine of 100 it takes forever to run out of shots with this and realistically you're not going to be running out of shots in any sort of combat situation unless you've chosen to spawn in like 10 times the amount of enemies and even then you still might have more than enough ammo to kill all of them before you need to actually reload this this weighs seven weight so not super heavy about the same as most of the other energy rifles and this one has 385 shots in it before it breaks. This one is fairly durable, so that's pretty nice. The reload animation on this is also kind of funny because you don't actually reload anything, you just smack the gun. 
and that reloads it somehow, so I do kind of like that about it. The Disintegrator is honestly a really, really good weapon. If you want to rush Mothership Zeta just for this weapon, I totally understand because it is probably one of the best energy rifles in the game for general purpose. You could argue that you might as well just rush the Unique Plasma Rifle, which I would say is maybe a little bit better than this, but this one is still a very strong weapon. So the Disintegrator I'd put all the way up into S tier. I think it's actually really good. And then we have the unique version of it, which is called the Destabilizer, which you get later on. And this one is kind of better and kind of worse than the last rifle we just talked about. Because this one is the same rifle, but it has less damage, but it's fully automatic. So if you have an excess of ammo, it can be better. If you don't have an excess of ammo, then the regular rifle is going to outperform this one. This one does 30 damage per hit, quite a bit less than the regular rifle. But like I said, it is full auto, so you can shoot a lot faster because it actually exceeds the DPS of the other one at 135, which is nice. This one does have a lower crit modifier though at just 0.44, which is quite high for a fully auto weapon, but it's still not that great compared to a two times crit modifier. This does 20 crit damage, so less damage than its regular damage, which is a little bit odd. This one does cost less action points at 25. I honestly think the other one's better for an action point build though, because it's more accurate and you get more damage per shot. So just costing five more action points, I think is worth it. And this one actually doesn't have too much more spread at 1.5. It is more spread than some other weapons, but um, it, it's okay for a fully automatic weapon. This one has hundred rounds in its magazine, which is useful since it is full auto. You're probably going to be going through them a little bit quicker, but hundred rounds is still a lot. And this one, weirdly enough, has its own unique animation. Well, not its own unique animation. It's the same animation pretty much as like the Mesmatron, but it's on this gun and you don't just smack your gun. You like seem to reach in and grab something and then put something back into it, but there's no actual object that you're doing that with. So it's, it's a little bit weird. This one still weighs seven weight and this one has a whole lot more item health at a thousand shots before it breaks, which is very useful. It makes it so that the full auto version of this doesn't break nearly as quick. You can fix this up with the regular disintegrators too, if you would like. This one can be good if you do like a full auto weapon or if you just have an excess amount of ammo, but I don't think it's as good as just the regular rifle. I would put this one high up into A tier. It's still a very good weapon. It's still very nice. And if you have an excess of ammo and you don't plan on using any of the other energy weapons or any of the other uh, alien weapons, you might as well use this one because you can just run it through the ammo the fastest and it's still really good for the DPS that it gives you. So it's really good at like indoor fights or close range fights. And that'll do it for all these alien weapons as well as all the weapons in Fallout 3. So all of these are going to be combined into one big compilation, which this one should fit on the channel. I tried to do that with the New Vegas one and the New Vegas one was like 27 hours and YouTube only lets you upload up to like a 24 hour video. So <laughs> this one should be shorter than that. It's still going to be a very long video, but it's just going to be all of these in compilation so that you can watch them one after another if you would like. Thank you guys so very much for watching all of these. I really do appreciate it. We are going to be continuing this as well. I am going to be continuing Fallout 4 at some point, but not right away. I'm actually going to be doing Fallout London after this, as well as a couple other games that I have planned. And I hope you're looking forward to the Weapons of London because that mod is really, really cool. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. You guys take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye!